become, I have to become one of these people. لم يخر عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين. This is the dua of this ummah today. Let me tell you something, guys. I've traveled not that much, but I've traveled enough. I've seen enough of the ummah to be able to make some observations. The crisis of the ummah is not economics. It's not politics, it's not education, it's not corruption. That is not the crisis of the ummah. The crisis of the ummah is that the family unit is being destroyed. People don't know how to raise their kids anymore. People don't know what it means to be parents anymore. Husbands don't know what, to, what it means to be a husband anymore. Wife doesn't know what it means to be a wife anymore. Children don't know what it means to be children anymore. That is being destroyed by the modern co context we live in. And when, when we learn this dua, we learn that one of the, the, the things that will protect us, will save us, save our ummah, is that we protect our family. We protect that unit. The biggest priority the parents in this room have, the biggest priority you have is the Islam of your children. What will they do when you're gone? Are they only making salat because you're standing over there? Or are they making salat because you've been able to put the taqwa of Allah in their hearts? Yaqub alayhi salam is dying. He's dying. And he looks at his children and says, Ma ta'buduna min ba'di? Am kuntum shuhada ith hadra Yaqub al maut? Ith qala li banihi, Ma ta'buduna min ba'di? He's dying and he looks at his children and says, What are you going to worship after I'm gone? While I was here, you used to pray. You used to worship Allah. You used to make dua to him. But I'm leaving. What are you going to do after I'm gone? What are you going to do? That's tarbiyah. This dua. Our master, give us the gift, hablana, give us the gift, not atina, not atina, right? It's hablana, from hiba, from hiba, and hiba in Arabic means a gift that you didn't expect. Ya Allah, give us the unexpected, undeserved gift. What gift? Min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. From our wives and our husbands and our children, give us what makes our eyes so happy that it makes us cry. Qurrata a'yun. It cools our eyes. You know what that means? It makes you so happy you want to cry. When you listen to your child recite Quran, and they love reciting Quran, then it makes you so happy you want to cry. When you look at your wife and watch how she's raising your children, it makes you so happy you want to cry. When she looks at the husband who wakes up her, her children for fudge, his children for Fajr and takes them to the masjid, she wants to cry. She's so happy. Our husbands cry. And our wives cry, but they don't cry because they're happy. <laughs> they cry for other reasons. You know, we are asking Allah for tears of joy. We want to be so happy with our family. How are we going to do that? Right now, every day you go home, you fight with your wife, man. Every day you go home. She's like, why were you so late? Why are you asking me? You always ask me. Don't you know there's traffic? Look outside the window. And you start every day, every day. And then you're so angry, then you look at the child and he's like, what are you, why are you playing with a toy? Why do you look happy? We don't have happiness here. Where's your homework? And the kid's like, I, I didn't get any homework. You know, why not? I'm going to complain to your school. You know, God, this is not qurrata ayun. There are people who come to the masjid for salat. And salat is supposed to make you, give you peace. It's supposed to make you calm. It's supposed to settle you down. And then they go home and there's a tornado that walked into the house. Oh, children or children hide under the bed. You know, the wife gets off the phone. She's like, you know, you cannot be the reason for your family to be afraid of you. You should be a reason for your family to be joyed, overjoyed. Your children should love, to, or they should run to you and hug you when you come home. That's the relationship you should have with your children. And while I'm on this topic, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, parenting was different. Now it's not the same. You cannot afford to be, I'm talking to the fathers here, you cannot afford to be authorities over your children. You cannot afford that. You have to be friends and authorities with your children. Our fathers were not friends with us. They were authorities. We didn't like slap our dad on the back and say, hey dad, let's go play some basketball, let's play some football. We didn't do that. Abba, come on, Baba. Abba, John, you sit straight. Assalamu alaikum. You get their shoes. That was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Your kids don't do that. 
and they won't. You, we're living in 2013, brothers and sisters. We have to accept reality. Our children are exposed to a lot of things. It doesn't matter if you're in the Muslim world or anywhere else. Ihtiram will remain. You have to respect your parents. But our children, we have to... The only one who will give them the love of Islam is you. And you will not be able to give it to them if you're only an authority. If you only yell at them and tell them what to do. But you're not their friend. Every father here should know and master the video games your children play. You should be better at, if you're letting your kids play video games, first of all, that's a problem. But if you are letting them play and you're not going to let them stop, then you better play with them. Then you better be sitting there playing with them. You don't go watch the news. You're not going to change the world. Okay? <laughs> You've watched enough news, believe me, and nothing has changed. You need to know, what the, what, you know whether the stock market went up or down. You don't even care about stocks, man. You, why are you watching the news? It has nothing to do with you. Listen to it in the car. When you're in the car. Don't come home and watch TV. Don't come home and watch the news. Come home and play with your kids. Do homework with your kids. Talk to your kids. Take your kids to the masjid. Do that with them. Make your kids love you. I tell you, I'm, I'm telling you, if we don't, if the fathers, if the fathers don't do this, we will lose this ummah. We will lose our next generation. I am telling you, I'm guaranteeing you, this is the real problem. The, the, I cannot come from America, Sheikh Mufti Ming, can, Mufti Ming cannot come from, you know, uh, all of different places in the world. And they come and they sit here and they give you a dars. We can only help a little bit. We can only help a little bit. The real change that will come in your child's life will come from you. Will come from you. رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنَ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنَ And now let me talk to the sisters for a little bit. Sisters. You're stuck with your husband. Stop being angry. Accept it. And try to love your husband. Try to make your husband happy. Because believe me, if he gets even a little bit happy, you will be really happy. I'm telling you, right now you say, I'm angry, why should he be happy? I know you, I know. I've talked to enough of you, I know. He, he doesn't care about me, why should I care about him? And he thinks the same thing. She doesn't care about me, why should I care about her? You start. You be nice to him. You smile at him and he'll get, he'll get all shocked. Like, why are you smiling? <laughs> Who? Wh what? Is everything okay? <laughs> you know? Is your, is your mother here? Is that you know? <laughs> you know? Uh-uh. You have to be nice to your husband. You have to... Don't dress up when you go to a wedding. Dress up for your husband. Even if you have four kids, it doesn't matter. Dress up for your husband. There's enough shaitan and fitna outside. So your husband should find beauty in you, not anywhere else. You, sh you should, and you should, be, you should compliment your wife. You should say nice things to your wife. You shouldn't just always complain, where are the keys? Where's the mail? Did you get the, did you get the groceries? Did you do this? Did you, oh, you didn't do anything. Oh, you don't listen to me. Stop, man. There's not enough salt. There's too much salt. There's not enough sugar, there's too much sugar. There's not hot enough, it's too hot. Stop! Stop! Say nice things to your wife. And I know if you're like Indian Pakistani, then it's very difficult for you. <laughs> I know. It's very hard to say nice things to your wife. In, in our culture, if you say nice things to your wife, your ribs hurt. Like, ah, I have it. <laughs> You know, so you have to immediately follow it up with something mean. You have to say something bad right after to balance the equation. You can't just say nice things. So if the food is really good, you're like, oh, but I still hate your mother. It's like something. You have to, <laughs> you have to add something. <laughs> you know. But don't try to be... This is the dua. We are asking Allah to give us so much happiness from our wife and our husband and our children that it makes us want to cry out of joy. How will that happen? You cannot ask Allah for something and not make any effort yourself. It doesn't work that way. You cannot say, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. Ya Allah, make me establisher of the prayer. And you're sitting, lying down in bed, adhan's going on, you're like, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. It's not, Allah is not going to send you angels that carry you and lift you to the salat, and then they make you make ruku and get you back. <laughs> you got to get up yourself, man. You make dua and you make some effort yourself. You're not going to make dua and all of a sudden your wife will start loving you. No, you have to show her love too. You have to do that. You have to make some effort in the house. I am telling you, this is the work of the ummah today. Fixing the family. 
fixing the family. And when our children see that the husband and wife are fighting with each other, they slip through the cracks. So they get in trouble with the mother, they run to the father. When they get in trouble with the father, they run to the mother. And they know they can do whatever they want that way. Because they know father and mother don't like each other. When father and mother are a team, oh man, then they got nowhere to go. You, went to, you go to mom, mom's like, okay, hold on, let me call your dad. Let's talk about this together. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I was hoping we could discuss this by ourselves without getting father involved. <laughs> no, no, You know? This is hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. And why should we do this? Why should I care so much about raising a good family, being a good husband? Wallahi, when you're a good husband, your son will be a good husband. When you're a good wife, your daughter will be a good wife. Sisters. This is what's good. And if you're not, then you will create bad families down in the future. And you will be the fault. You will be the reason. So we say, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama." Make us imam, make us leaders over people that have taqwa. In other words, everybody who has a household is an imam. You have an imam of the masjid. You have an imam of you know, the, the musalla. But every house has an imam. You're the imam of your house. I don't care if you have a beard or not. You're the imam of your house. I don't care if you memorize Quran or not. You're the imam of your house. And you want to make sure that your household that you are imam over, these people are muttaqeen. The last thing I want to share with you about these requirements is why? Why did Allah say, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama On judgment day, when I stand in front of Allah as an imam over my six children and my wife, when I am imam over them, they will be tied to me. And if I didn't do my job with them, and they made mistakes because of me, their mistakes will also cost me. I will be dragged down with them. But if I raise my children correctly, and I did good with them, and they went on to serve Allah's deen, and become good people, earn good deeds, then Allah raises them. And when He raises them automatically, because I'm chained to them, He raises me. We ask Allah to be with Imam over Muttaqeen. Because we, we ask that because we need it on Judgment Day. My deeds are not enough. I'm going to need commission from my children and their children and their children and their children. I tell you something. Where I, you know, I'm originally from Pakistan. And I come from a family and a, like an extended family that's not very religious. We're not like super religious. I, I wasn't raised religiously really. I mean, we made some salat here and there, but overall we're not that. You know, and the, most Pakistani families are like that. There are some that are religious, but most of them, in our circle at least, were not like that, right? And you know what? They were really, like, you know, when I started learning more about the religion, my cousins and other family members were kind of a little bit in shock. They were a little bit taken back. Well, why are you growing a beard? We don't do that. You know, why is your wife wearing hijab and niqab and all of that? Why is she doing that? You know, why, do you, why can't you be regular? <laughs> why can't you be normal, they said. Right? Because normally, we, you know, women don't wear hijab and it's all good. And the men are the way they are and salat if once in a while is fine. No big deal. You go to a wedding by Asr time, Maghrib, Isha go by, nobody cares. Songs are playing, it's no, no problem. Right? And so they say, you are leaving the tradition. Why aren't you like us? Why do you want to be like the Malvi Sahab? Why do you want to be, I'm a really strange Malvi Sahab, I know, I'm wearing a suit. I know. It's, it's weird, it's confusing to you, I understand. I'll explain it to you one day, I'll come back and explain it to you. But, but for now, let me tell you something. Look back two generations ago. Look at the picture of your great-grandfather and his wife. They barely had black and white photographs back then. What, guess what? Grandpa's got a big old beard and grandma's got... You don't even see her face. That's our tradition. Someone in this lineage decided that they will not take the deen seriously. And then their children decided not to take it, they take it even less seriously. And their children take it even less seriously. Until you get to a point where they're not even Muslim. I met a, I met a fellow, when I, was in, I was at a Qur'an conference in Las Vegas, I swear, it was a Qur'an conference. Okay? So I was there at a Qur'an conference and I met this really old white couple. You know, they're in their 90s. Blonde hair, blue eyes, they came into the masjid. And I said, what are you doing here? He goes, well, we just became Muslim last year. And we decided that we want to meet as many Muslims as we can before we die. So we go stop at every masjid in America. 
And we started in Ohio and now we've made it to Vegas. And we're going to go on to California and so on. And I was like, why did you become Muslim? A 91 year old man and woman who become Muslim. He said, I was looking up my family tree and I realized that we're actually of Lebanese origin. And my great grandfather who moved to America was actually a Muslim. But then his son, my grandfather, married a Christian. And then the children were raised pretty much between the two religions. And then they, they, they ended up choosing Christianity. And then we were raised Christians. And I, I've been raised a Christian. My children were Christian. But when I looked back at my lineage, I said, how was my great-grandfather Muslim? What is Islam anyway? I started reading it and I came back to Islam.